So welcome to Ethopedia World. This is the part 3 of my video about pollination. And this time we're going to discuss about the agent of pollination. When we say agent of pollination, that is being immobile, normally required agents for the transport of the pollen and which are commonly like us, wind, insects, birds, mammals, bats, rodents, primates, and water. Also, the process of pollination requires agent or we can call this as pollinators that carry or move the pollen grains from the anther to the receptive part of the female reproductive organ, which is methods of pollination with common pollinators of plants are. First, we have the biotic pollination by using the organisms and biotic pollination included entomophily which is pollination by insects. Classified for one, we have the bees, wasps, and occasionally ants. The second one, we have the beetles or Coleoptera. Next one, we have the moths and the butterflies. And next, we have the flies or Diptera. In this case, we have four for entopore pupillae. Honeybee pollinations are travel from flower to flower, which is the honeybees are usually collecting nectar and pollage pollen grains. And the bee collect the pollen by rubbing against the anthers, and the pollen collect on the hind legs, and in dense here referred to as a pollen basket. As the bee flies from flower to flower, some of the pollen grains are transferred onto the stigma of the other flower. Nectar provides the energy for bee nutrition. Pollen provides the protein. When bees are rearing large quantities of broad, or thus beekeepers say hives are building, bees will deliberately gather pollens to meet the nutritional needs of the broad. A honeybee that is deliberately gathering pollen is up to 10 times more efficient as a pollinator than one that is primarily gathering nectar and only unintentionally transferring pollen. Good pollination management seeks to have bees in a building state during the bloom period of the crop, thus re requiring them to gather pollen and making them more efficient pollinators. Thus, the management techniques of a big keeper providing pollination services are different from and somewhat incompatible with those of a big keeper who is trying to produce honey. Other species of bees will differ in various details of their behavior and pollen gathering habits, and it should be remembered that honeybees are not native to the Western Hemisphere and all pollination of native plants in Americas has been historically performed by various native bees. Next one, we have the bat pollination. Most bat species that pollinate flowers inhabit Africa, Southeast Asia, and Pacific Islands such as Philippines. Although bat pollination occurs, over a geographically wide range, many fruits are dependent on bats for pollination, such as mangoes, banana, and guavas, and bat pollination is an integral progress in tropical communities with 500 tropical plant species completely or partially dependent on bats for pollination. Also, it has been noted that outcrossing introducing in unrelated genetic material into a breeding line by but increased genetic diversity and is important in tropical communities. Plants pollinated by bats often have white or pale nocturnal flowers that are large and bell-shaped. Many of these flowers have a large amount of nectar and emit a smell that attracts bats such as strong, fruity, or musky odor. Bats use certain chemical cues to locate food sources and they are attracted to odor that, send, that contain esters, alcohols, aldehydrates, and alipritical 
acids. The banana bat is a nectar -bious species found only the Pacific coast of Mexico. It has a very small geographical range and is distinguishable by its extremely long nose. The long snout and tongue, one tongue recorded as measuring 76 mm, allows this bat to feed on the nectar of long tubular flowers and this bat species is small, with a head and body length ranging from 70 to 79 mm. The wild banana flowers elongated with a purple color. Next pollination, we have the bird. The term ornithorpini is used to describe pollination specifically by birds. Hummingbirds found only in North and South America are the most recognized nectar-eating bird, but there are many other bird species throughout the world that also are important pollinators. This includes sunbirds, honey eaters, flower pickers, honey creepers, and banana pits. Plants pollinated by birds often have brightly colored dual line flowers that are red, yellow, or orange, but no other because birds have a poor sense of smell. Other characteristics of these plants are that they typically have suitable sturdy plants or places for perching. Though hummingbirds can hover, an abundant nectar that is deeply nested within the flower. Often flowers elongated or tube-shaped, also many plants have anthers placed in the flower so that pollen rubs against the bird's head back as the bird reaches in for nectar. The ruby-throated hummingbird is one of the many species of hummingbirds found in North and Central America and this bird is an important pollinator for a variety of plant species. Some species such as trumpet creeper are adopted specifically for rubber throughout hummingbirds and this species is quite small measuring 7.5 to 9.0 cm long and weight only 3.4 to 3.8 grams. The long narrow gill of the hummingbird is the perfect tool for extracting nectar from elongated flowers. This species is attracted to brightly colored flowers, especially those that are red in color. Next type for biotic pollination, we have the zoophily, or pollination by vertebrates such as birds or bats, as we discussed a while ago. Birds such as hummingbirds, sunbirds, spiders, honey eaters. Next, we have the mammals such as bats, monkey, marsupial, lemurs, bears, rabbits, deer, and odin, and also we have the lizard. In terms of pollination by other mammals, non-flying mammals have been found to feed on the nectar of several species of a plant. Though some of these mammals are pollinators, others do not carry or transfer enough pollen to be considered pollinators. The group of non-flying pollinators is mainly composed of marsupial, primates, and rodents, and well documented studies of non-flying mammal pollination now involve at least 59 species of mammals distributed among 19 families and pig orders. As of 1997, there were 85 species of plants from 43 genera and 19 families that were visited by these mammals. In many cases, a plant species is visited by a range of mammals, and two examples of multiple mammals pollination are the genus Quarabia, which is visited by 12 species, and Combretum, which is visited by 8. Plant species that feed non flying mammals will often exhibit similar characteristics to aid in pollination. The flowers are often large and sturdy or are grouped together as multi-flowered inflorescence. Many non-flying mammals are nocturnal and have an acute sense of smell. So the plants tend not to have bright showy colors but instead excrete a pungent odor. Plants while 
Often, flower fragilely and produce a large amount of sugar-rich nectar. These plants are also tend to produce large amount of pollens because the mammals are larger than some other pollinators and lack the precise smaller pollinators can achieve. Animals with more precious such as bees or other insects with a probus kiss can pollinate small flowers with less pollen necessarily. This means that a plant with required more pollen for a larger mammal pollinators. One example of symbiotic relationship between a plant and its animal pollinators is the African lily or Masonia dispersa and some rodent species of the Sukhut Karo regions of South Africa. At least four rodent species, including two gerbil species, were found to be visiting M. The present during the night. Traits of M, the press of flowers, support non-flying mammal pollinations, and it has dull-colored and very sturdy flowers at ground level, has a strong yeasty odor and secret caution amount of the sucrose dominant nectar during the night. The nectar of M depressor was also found to be 400 times as fresh goes or resistant to flow as an equivalent sugar solution, and this jelly-like consistency of the nectar may discourage insect consumption while also facilitating lapping by rodent and is assumed that M. depressa co-evolved with its pollinators. For the lizard pollination, although lizard pollination has historically been underestimated, recent studies have shown lizard pollinations to be an important part of many plant species of Viral. Not only do research show mutualistic relationships, but these are found to occur most often on Iceland or islands. This patterns of lizards pollination on islands is mainly due to their high densities, a surplus of floral food, and a rel relatively low predation risk when compared to lizard and on the mainland. The lizard, Hoplodactylus, is only attracted by nectar and flowers, not pollen. This means flowers pollinated by this species must produce corpus nectar as a reward for Hoplodactylus and scented or scented flowers are another important adoption to attract lizard due to their acute sense of smell. Although lizards have the ability to distinguish colors because this kind of lizards and other lizards feed not nurturally and it's sometimes less important for flowers to allocate resources to showy inflorescence and flowers must also be robust enough to support the weight of the pollinators while feeding. In New Zealand, this kind of lizard visit flowers of many native plant species for nectar and pollens. The flowers of Metrosiderus excelsa are poly pollinated by more than 550 types of gecko as well as birds and bees. Of the jacket species, this species, two thirds of them carried large amount of pollens, suggesting a main role in pollination. However, after the arrival of human in New Zealand, lizard population have declined, making it more difficult to witness lizard pollination. Next, we have the abiotic pollination after biotic pollination, and this includes any meal or pollination by wind grasses commonly, most coniferous, and many deciduous trees. Next, for abiotic pollination, we have the hydropili, which is pollination by water, such as aquatic plants, and about 80% of a plant pollination is biotic. Of the 20% of abiotic pollinated species, 98% is by wind and 2% by water and sun. We also have the test for pollination according to the Asian uh, pollination. We have the animopil, pollination by wind, cantropili, pollination by beetle, chiolopteropili, pollination by bat, example the centrum plants, Entomopili, pollination by insects. Hydropili, pollination by water. Meritopili, or hymenopteropili, pollination by bee. 
Mimercopoli, pollination by ant. Necrocalyopteropili, pollination by carrion beetle. Ornithopili, pollination by bird. Phalaenopili, pollination by moth. Psychopili, pollination by butterfly. Sapromicpili, pollination by flies. So, thank you for listening to Peter World. Hope you learned a lot about pollination.